This video contains content that viewers may find disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome back to 100 Horrible Ways People Can Die. I'm John. And I'm Alex. Today's episode is titled Eaten Alive, where we talk about some of the ways people can be eaten by animals. Being attacked and eaten by animals is a terrible, terrifying way to die. It can happen from uh, being in the wrong place at the wrong time, or by actually seeking out the animals because you want to take a photograph or something. Yeah, sure. And some of the deadliest animals, or some of the most famous animals that eat people are... Lions. Tigers. Bears. Crocodiles. Wolves. Sharks. Tigers. Humans. All right, well, let's talk about bears first. Sure. Just bear with me for a second here. But uh, on October 5th, 2003, Tim and Amy were at their campsite in Katmai National Park in Alaska. Right. And they were attacked by a grizzly bear. And the details of this grizzly situation are not, well, established, but they were found half eaten the next day. Yeah, since the details of the attack aren't really well known, let's get into a little bit about what we do know about the story. In the vast wilderness of Alaska, two people found solace among the grizzly bears they sought to protect. Their passion for these majestic creatures ultimately led to a tragic and horrifying end. This is the story of Timothy Treadwell and Amy Huguenard. Timothy Treadwell was born in Mineola, Long Island, New York, one of five children. A lover of animals since he was a child, Treadwell decided to travel to Alaska to watch bears after a close friend persuaded him to do so. Amy Lynn Huguenard was born in Buffalo, New York on October 23, 1965. She developed an interest in science and medicine and was also fascinated by the outdoors, spending much of her spare time hiking and climbing while working as a doctor's assistant in Colorado. It was during this period in 1997 that she read a book among grizzlies, whose author claimed to have found solace from drug addiction in the company of Alaska's brown bears. The writer's name was Timothy Treadwell. Soon, Amy Huguenard reached out to Treadwell, thus beginning a relationship which would last for nearly six years. It wasn't long before she was flying up to Alaska to spend portions of the summers with him among the grizzlies of Katmai National Park. In October 2003, Treadwell and Huguenard visited Katmai National Park. The couple's mangled remains were discovered quickly upon investigation. A large male bear protecting the campsite was killed by park rangers during their attempt to retrieve the bodies. A video camera recovered at the site proved to have been operating during the attack, but police said that the six-minute tape contained only voices and cries as a brown bear mauled Treadwell to death. Using what we know about what was recorded on the audio recording, made during the actual bear attack. Let's speculate what might have happened. The rain fell heavily on the canvas tent, nestled deep within the Alaskan wilderness of Katmai National Park. The evening air was thick with the scent of damp earth as the sun dipped below the horizon, casting a somber twilight glow over the campsite. Inside the tent, Timothy Treadwell and Amy Huguenard listened to the sound of the rain the patter of droplets interrupted by the distant splashing of bears fishing for the season's last salmon. A sudden rustling outside the tent drew Treadwell's attention. He unzipped the tent flap and cautiously stepped out, guided by the faint twilight. He squinted as he searched the area for the source of the disturbance, only to find himself face to face with a large, older bear. The bear had been in the area trying to find food before winter set in, and it had stumbled upon the campsite. Treadwell's heart raced as the bear lunged at him, biting and swiping with its powerful paws. He cried out for help, his voice strained with pain and fear. Hearing his pleas, Huguenard quickly unzipped the tent fly, her eyes wide with terror as she took in the horrifying scene before her. She shouted at Treadwell to play dead, hoping that the bear would lose interest and leave him alone. For a brief moment the bear retreated, and Treadwell lay still his body trembling with fear and pain. However, as he attempted to crawl back towards the tent, the bear returned, its eyes locked on its prey. Treadwell begged Huguenard to hit the bear with something, anything that could deter the massive creature from continuing its attack. Huguenard, desperate to save her partner, screamed at him to fight back. Her shrill cries, however, 
unknowingly resembled a predator call, which only served to further provoke the bear. The bear's relentless attack continued, and Treadwell's cries eventually fell silent, drowned out by Huguenard's continued screams. As the rain continued to fall, the bear turned its attention to Huguenard. Driven by hunger and the sounds of her screams, the bear attacked and killed her, dragging her body away from the campsite to cache it for later consumption. Their tragic end serves as a haunting reminder of the unpredictability and unforgiving nature of the wild. As the rain washed away the remnants of their struggle, the Alaskan wilderness reclaimed its silence, leaving behind only the echo of their desperate cries in the cold, dark night. In the 85-year history of Katmai National Park, this was the first known incident of a person being killed by a bear. The tragic end of Timothy Treadwell and Amy Huguenard serves as a stark reminder of the dangers that can befall those who venture too close to the wild. As we reflect on the lives and tragic deaths of Timothy Treadwell and Amy Huguenard, we must remember the importance of respecting the power and unpredictability of nature. While their passion for the bears was admirable, their story is a cautionary tale that teaches us the limits of human interaction with the wild. Their legacy lives on, serving as a reminder of the delicate balance between humans and the natural world. All right, so let's talk about the odds of something like that happening to you or I if we went camping. Okay. So according to the National Park Service, the chances of being attacked by bear is just 1 in 2.1 million. And according to some other numbers, between the years 1900 and 2021, so about 121 years, there were around 183 fatal bear attacks in North America. So that average is somewhere between one and two per year. Yep, so the number of non-fatal bear attacks is higher, but still uncommon when compared to the millions of people who visit bear-infested areas infested each year. Areas. Yeah. Oh. Uh, also... Bears are nothing when compared to mosquitoes. According to the World Health Organization, it estimates mosquito-borne diseases kill some 725,000 people a year. That's a lot more than bears, and that's why I use bug spray. Well, thankfully, there's also bear spray, and that leads us into our next safety tip. If you're in the woods and it's an area that's predisposed to grizzly bears or areas where there's more deadly bears, have some bear spray with you. Traveling groups. Traveling groups. And be aware of your surroundings. Make noise. I don't know about the make noise part. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Is it true? Yeah, it's absolutely true. Okay, well, if you don't feel comfortable, just do some more research. There you go. And be mindful of your surroundings. All right, so let's get into some crocodile stories. All right, the story we have for you today is the 1945 Ramree Island incident. Try saying that 10 times. No, thanks. During World War II, British forces and Japanese troops engaged each other on what is now Myanmar, but was then Burma. And I believe it was the Indian colonial expedition forces from the British. Right. So it was majority Indian troops mm -hmm. from India. And as the Japanese soldiers were retreating through the mangrove swamps in that area, a lot of them were attacked by saltwater crocodiles. Because right. Of course, mangroves are in salt water. Mm -hmm. So while the exact number of casualties is unknown due to the natures of war, and evidence be eaten alive. Some estimates suggest that as many as 400 Japanese soldiers were killed and eaten by crocodiles during this event. Yeah, so let's tell a story about a about this historical event, mm -hmm. uh, about a, uh, a private, a young private in mm -hmm. 1945 who is heading into the mangrove swamps. Okay, let's do it. In 1945, during World War II, the Indian 15th Corps, led by British forces, launched Operation Matador to retake Ramri Island off the coast of Burma, present-day Myanmar, from Japanese occupation. Among the soldiers was a young private named Rajesh, who had never set foot on the battlefield. After days of intense fighting, the British forces managed to push the Japanese troops toward the island's dense mangrove swamps. Rajesh and his unit followed closely behind, eager to capture the retreating enemy. However, little did they know that the swamps were infested with saltwater crocodiles, which would soon turn the battleground into a nightmarish scene of carnage. As the soldiers ventured deeper into the swamp, the darkness and treacherous terrain made it difficult to keep track of their surroundings. Suddenly, Rajesh heard blood-curdling screams echoing through the swamp. He saw his fellow soldiers being dragged beneath the murky water by massive crocodiles. 
their powerful jaws clamped around the victim's limbs, torsos, or heads. The crocodile's attacks were swift and brutal. Their sharp teeth and crushing jaw strength inflicted severe injuries, causing deep puncture wounds, massive blood loss, and often instant death. The victim's bones were crushed, and vital organs were ruptured as the crocodiles performed their infamous death roll, a spinning maneuver intended to disorient and subdue their prey. Rajesh watched in horror as the crocodiles devoured his comrades, but he knew he had to act fast if he wanted to survive. Drawing on his training and quick thinking, he climbed a nearby mangrove tree to escape the predators lurking below. The crocodiles, unable to reach him, eventually lost interest and moved on to other targets. Throughout the night, Rajesh clung to the branches, praying for daylight and the end of the carnage below. As morning finally arrived, the first light of dawn began to seep through the dense canopy of the mangrove swamp, casting an eerie glow on the waterlogged battleground. The once quiet swamp was now a scene of devastation. The muddy water was stained red with blood, and the mangled, partially devoured remains of soldiers from both sides lay scattered throughout the area, tangled in the roots of the mangroves. The crocodile attacks had not only left physical scars on the landscape, but it also left an indelible mark on the psyches of the survivors. The haunting cries of the dying still echoed in their minds, and the fear of the unseen predators lurking beneath the water remained intensely perceptible. Rajesh, though relieved to have survived the night, understood that the danger had not yet passed. He knew that the crocodiles could still be hiding beneath the water's surface, waiting for another opportunity to strike. As he climbed down from his refuge, he cautiously scanned his surroundings, his eyes darting from shadow to shadow, his body tense and alert. His heart pounded in his chest as he carefully stepped from one submerged tree root to another, doing his best to avoid the murky water. Every splash or rustle of leaves sent a jolt of fear through him, and he clutched his rifle tightly, ready to defend himself at any moment. Rajesh eventually reached the relative safety of solid ground, where he found the surviving members of his unit. The grim expressions on their faces mirrored his own, each man keenly aware of the horrors they had just witnessed, and the friends they had lost. They shared a solemn moment of silence, paying their respects to the fallen, before stealing themselves to continue the mission to secure the island. Fascinating story. So we've got some numbers here, and according to the International Union for Conservation of Nature, crocodiles are responsible for a few hundred human fatalities each year. Yeah, the likelihood of encountering a crocodile uh, and being attacked is more likely in Africa, Asia, and Australia. And I think we mixed crocodiles and alligators sure. together in this data just because... I don't we really don't know the difference, difference here. Alligators, Pretty crocodiles, the same, Florida. The same way. Yeah. yeah. So... Regardless of whether it's an alligator or a crocodile, be cautious around water, swamps, or yeah, ponds. we definitely we can avoid being eaten by avoiding crocodile habitats for sure. Pretty common sense. Um, do not feed the crocodiles or alligators. That's true, because if you feed them, they'll associate you with food and then maybe eat you. So yeah, just an app- you're giving them an appetizer. Yeah, let's not do that. Herbs. So in the li- unlikely event that you are attacked by an alligator or crocodile. Um, there are some soft spots like hit him in the nose, you know, things like that. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, you can try to defend yourself by gouging their eyes uh, and right. yell at the top of your lungs for help as long as you're not in the death roll underwater. Right. So they'll try to grab you and roll and spin you around so you drown. So, yeah, don't drown. All right. That's all I have for safety tips. Yeah, me too. OK. I think you wanted to mention something about some. Yeah, thought we should end the show a little bit about how just because you're getting eaten by an animal doesn't mean it has to be a big scary animal it can be a really small animal and one of the more frightening animals around is the so-called braiding amoeba uh nigeria foully something like that i don't know how to pronounce it but that's responsible for between three to five deaths a year on average in the united states wow so more people die to this every year in the u.s at least than to bears wow and i think bears are probably scarier than something you can't really see but what happens is if you're in an area with dirty brackish water, so possibly one of those ponds or don't swamps, drink it. Well, yeah, obviously that, that's because you also don't want to get diarrhea and other stuff too. That don't swim in it. Be careful when you swim in it. it what happens is it can go through your sinus, uh, sinus cavity, 
some people have like holes in there and it will bleed up to their brain stem and to their brain there's no immune system in the brain so once the amoeba gets into your brain there's nothing that can be done for it uh, i'm just not gonna go swimming if i looks if it looks like dirty water i'm just not going in you can get them from fresh water to clean water as well depending which part of the country really? you're in yeah just because it's brackish it means it's more likely that it's there but it doesn't rule out the fact that a crystal clear spring won't have it either that sounds horrible it does but again if you're not sure of the quality of the water don't inhale it don't breathe it in which kind of makes sense anyway because why would you want to do that yeah you're gonna drown drown, right (laughs) yeah right so did an episode on drowning and that was not a fun way to drown either absolutely not yeah so i thought it'd be interesting to end with the smallest creature i believe that could eat you alive or maybe maybe bacteria would be smaller i don't really know i don't know plus eating bacteria technically is eating you alive too isn't it true Necritic fasciitis, something like that, kills several hundred people a year in the United States. Sounds bad. Yeah. Still not killing as many people as mosquitoes, but it's actually eating you. Whereas the mosquito is just... You just wear bug spray and you're all right. Until they get mosquitoes that are resistant to bug spray. I guess that's true. Only a matter of time. Only a matter of time, John. While it may be tempting to get up and close and personal with these animals try to get a photo or whatever you have to remember these are wild dangerous animals and they may kill and eat you yeah being eaten alive is probably one of the worst ways to die but thankfully there's some common sense tips that we talked about that you can use to avoid these situations right so that's all the time we have for today uh share like and subscribe and leave leave us some comments and please make sure to join us on our next episode which is going to be about uh people suffocating Remember, stay Stay safe safe out out there. there.